Well, hello everybody and welcome to our Tim at 10. Um, today is, what is today? Today is Wednesday, August 30th, um, 2023. And today we're gonna spend some time talking about the importance of rituals and routines in not only your classroom, but in your school and in your everyday life. Uh, so, you know, this session right here is going to be good for both um, adults, for administrators, um, you know, but also in the classroom for classroom teachers. We're going to talk a lot about how routines and rituals benefit the children, but also benefit the adult um, and make your life a little bit easier as well. So that's kind of what we have planned today. Um, I don't think this is gonna take the full hour, um, but you never know because we kind of like to talk every once in a while. All right, I hope everyone had a really good back to school transition and that your new school year is going well so far. Um, we've got lots and lots going on around here, so um, here we go. All right, so rituals and routines. Um, I decided to do this webinar today um, after having a lot of conversations with different classroom teachers and, and being in some classrooms, um, you know, just some confusion on what is the difference between a ritual and a routine um, and why it's important to have both rituals and routines in your classroom. So, um, you know, after having a couple of these conversations, I thought, hmm, this is a really good webinar idea so that we can fully understand what is the difference between a routine and a ritual and how each of them is beneficial for um, your school and your school family. So, um, a, um, and, and, you know, it's been a while since we've done a Tim at 10, so I'll go ahead and lay out um, kind of how this works. Uh, we'll have our Tim at 10. We'll go through the content and the material. You've got your chat screen. Those of you that are participating live, you've got your chat screen so that you can ask questions or you can make comments um, that are related to the topic today. Um, so you've got that. Now, if you're watching the recorded video, um, then you don't have that chat option, but you can always email me or call if you have any questions or you need some additional information. Um, at the end of our webinar today, we will post a link so you can complete a worksheet and get a certificate of training um, that is available on our website. So you'll log into the Tim the Trainer website with your username and password. Um, you'll complete the worksheet. Um, there is a $5 fee for the certificate um, if you're needing that certificate of completion um, and then you'll get that. Most of you are very familiar with how that works right there. Um, easy breezy. Um, hey, make sure that you enter your TechPeds um, ID number on your profile with Tim the Trainer um, so that our courses that are verified with um, TechPeds will show up in your TechPed account. Um, but that's only going to happen if your TechPed ID is on your profile. So make sure that you're updating that um, or you make sure you put that in there whenever you complete that uh, profile and you complete your training. So there you go. All right, let's talk about routines and rituals. Um, now, I just did a webinar about two or three weeks ago on the science of consistency. So hopefully y'all were able to watch that webinar, uh, either participate in it live or you've been able to watch the recording. If not, it is available on my website, timthetrainer.com. Um, but we really talked about um, um, the science behind consistency, um, predictability, structure, routine, and why this is beneficial for, again, both the adults and the children in the classroom. Um, so this is kind of um, added on to that particular topic, kind of going a little bit deeper into consistency. And that's where we're gonna talk about routines and rituals. Now a routine is a sequence of actions that is followed um, kind of like a fixed program. Um, it's a regularly followed fixed program. So, you know, when we talk about routines, that would be hand washing, uh, going to the restroom, getting ready for nap time, getting ready uh, to go outside. And you're basically trying to complete a task and you're doing it in a certain order. Now, routines are very important for the children because, again, it, it creates that consistency. Um, it's the pattern seeking that our brain craves so much, um, and it provides structure. Um, and a lot of our children really need that structure. So when you think about a routine, 
that's what you want to think about. Um, daily tasks that most of the time are related to health and safety um, that we need to get completed in the classroom. And you do this on a regular basis with frequency. Now, a, root, a ritual is a sequence of activities that normally involve gestures, words, actions, or objects that are related to meaningful connections. So when you're talking about a ritual, it's about the adult connecting with the child in a meaningful way. And you do this um, with repetition. Um, so again, a ritual is a sequence of activities that typically involve using gestures, words, actions, or objects. And you're going for those meaningful connections. So that's kind of the difference between a routine and a ritual. And what we want to look at here is that you're going to establish routines and rituals throughout your day. So this is not something that you do one time in the morning, one time in the afternoon. Our goal here is to incorporate these rituals throughout the day. At different times during the day, children may be in different states. The adult may be in a different state. Um, so we want to be able to connect with that child when the connection is needed the most. All right, and a lot of our rituals are done spontaneously. Uh, so you see that opportunity to create that meaningful connection, you go for it right there. All right, now what are the adult benefits? Uh, what is the adult going to get out of this? Well, here's some really interesting facts for you that with routines, routines help us stay focused so that we can improve our physical health. Routines also reduce stress. Some other benefits of routine is they alleviate anxiety. And you know, right now, um, there's a lot of anxiety around the world, um, you know, with everything that we're dealing with. Everyone's kind of walking on eggshells um, for, for so many different reasons. The more activity we can put in our classrooms, the more activity we can put in our schools to help reduce anxiety for the adult you know, the better off we're going to be right there. So having these well-established routines help alleviate anxiety. It also, are you ready for this? Having routines in place reduces burnout. It prevents individuals from having burnout. Um, we all need that right now. Um, you know, we, we get so many phone calls and so many emails in our office um, from all of you, you know, all around the country um, that are really struggling with burnout, both yourself and your staff. Um, it, it's a big, big issue that we're dealing with in the early education industry right now. So, you know, the more systems we can put in place to help alleviate and combat that burnout, the better off we're going to be. Well, it's that predictability, it's that structure, that's what's needed right there. When, um, when things are just very spontaneous and we don't know what's going on, that creates stress and anxiety. So we want that. The routines also promote healthy habits, all right? And it helps us with focus and productivity. We definitely can all benefit from that right there. Now rituals, how rituals help the adult is that Rituals help shape culture. Um, now, I've got a whole series of webinars that I'm working on for y'all right now on reshaping our culture. As we continue to navigate past the last three and a half years um, and kind of reestablish ourselves as an early education industry, you know, we really have to kind of look at our culture and how can we reshape that culture to kind of meet our current business needs, uh, especially when we talk about our, our workforce crisis, uh, when we talk about retention, when we talk about turnover of staff. I think it's a really good idea for all of us to do a really comprehensive review of our culture and what that means and what it stands for. So I've got some really cool stuff that I'm working on that I'm super excited to share with y'all um, in, the, in the coming months about that. But rituals are a great way for you to reshape that culture, all right? And, and again, this is not just with the children in the classroom, but creating those meaningful connections between the administrator and the staff, between the teachers and the co-teachers, all of the adults in the building. 
You know, I just did a workshop yesterday where we talked about um, the way adults treat each other has a bigger impact on children's self-regulation than how the adult treats the child. Um, well, how adults treat each other, y'all, that's culture, all right? And that has to be established and shaped. So as you kind of are thinking about and reflecting on this material on rituals and routines, be thinking about what type of rituals you could put in place um, amongst your adults, amongst your school family. I think that would be very helpful for you. Um, you know, rituals help us also create shared identity. Um, it gives us a sense of belonging. Once again, this is a big topic of conversation right now. Not just children, but adults need a sense of belonging. They need to feel like they're part of something, and that's very important right now. When we talk about the workforce crisis, when we talk about retention and turnover, what's going to keep people in place is giving them a sense of belonging, right? So rituals is going to help with that right there. And of course, rituals is going to help unite us, all right? It's going to help unite us. Once again, what we're going for with rituals is creating those meaningful connections that's going to help wire our brain for impulse control and willingness. And that, again, is exactly what we need right now is impulse control and willingness. So let's kind of think about, um, you know, these rituals right here. And I, I want to start off our day talking about rituals. Think about some of the rituals that you had growing up, you know, as a child uh, with your family. What were some things that you did, um, whether it was on special holidays or special occasions, you know, birthdays or anniversaries, family gatherings that you had certain rituals that, um, that, that you, you, you participated in, um, or maybe, you know, just everyday life in the household that the mom or dad or guardian would have a ritual with the child at bedtime, um, a ritual in the morning uh, during breakfast time or at dinner time. You know, there were a lot of these family traditions that we had in place years ago um, that were very meaningful to the connection of the family. And some of that has been lost um, over the years, that a lot of these family rituals that, that we did as children, they've stopped, right? And we're not doing these rituals as much as we used to. Um, well, you know, think about that right there. And think about how you can reincorporate that into your lifestyle. Um, and how can you bring some of those rituals, those meaningful rituals, into your school and make it part of your everyday practice right there? You know, when we talk about the four goals of rituals, here's what we're going for. Okay, rituals optimize children's brains for success in schools and for, for success at school and in life. All right, so it's optimizing that brain power for meaningful connections. It's increasing the learning potential and effectiveness through touch. Our brain is genetically wired for physical touch. And if you remember at the beginning when I talked about the definition of a ritual, it's using those gestures, words, actions, and objects to have meaningful connections. All of your rituals that you put into your classroom need to include some type of physical touch, whether it's a hand clap, whether it's a handshake, whether it's a hug, um, but some type of physical touch right there. All right, creating rituals, it holds people together, especially during tough times. When you have conflict in the classroom, when you have upset in the classroom, those rituals are going to keep your classroom together. And that's what we need right there. It also, you know, it strengthens the bond between the adult and the child, all right? And that is going to help them later in life when they are faced with, you know, drugs or violence or peer pressure, um, you know, all of those things right there. The more rituals, the more meaningful connections that are put in place is going to help combat those issues later in life. And of course, the rituals is going to lay the foundation for both mental and emotional health, all right? So those are the four goals that we're going for with rituals, all right? 
So again, strengthening that bond with, between adults and children, laying that foundation for mental and emotional health. Um, this is ongoing throughout every single day. You know, right now at the beginning of the school year, we talk about, you know, we've got to reach them before we can teach them. That's very, very important right there. But it's ongoing. It doesn't stop. All right. So constantly be looking for that. Rituals are an expression of unity. They hold the classroom together. All right. They are a sacred place uh, designated for togetherness and connection. Um, so once again, think about those holiday rituals that you had as a child or even as an adult in your family, such as Thanksgiving, you know, that bonding that you do at Thanksgiving time. Um, and Thanksgiving is about practicing that gratitude. Well, when you put the rituals in your classroom, you add that gratitude piece in there. All right. Um, those birthday rituals, those uh, preparing for a family meal, that's connecting us. Right. Um, so again, I really want y'all to reflect on what that looks and feels like at home and then how you can bring that into the classroom right there. All right. Um, and again, if you really want to know the power of rituals um, so that you can fully understand the impact of this in your classroom, you know, look at athletic teams, uh, sports teams, so baseball, football, basketball, you know, um, athletic teams, they build rituals and research shows that teams that connect win more right the teams that connect in the locker room they win more out on the field they put these rituals in place because that what that's what bonds the teams together you know street gangs do this also you know if you look at a street gang they also have rituals that connect them you know that's kind of a, a darker side of this but it's getting the point across on how you can see where rituals kind of go across the board right there all right um, connecting rituals are essential because they connect and foster willingness I've been doing a lot of conversations here lately um, about connection and willingness um, and especially really digging into the willingness. Um, we have a lot of people, both adults and children, that are just not, um, you know, that are not willing to meet expectation. There's a lot of hesitation. There's a lot of resistance. Uh, so we've really got to work on that willingness, right? Well, willingness comes from connection. It comes from meaningful connection. Um, it wires that brain for impulse control. That's where we've got to go with this. Yes, Letitia, you're right. We are a gang-free zone. So no gangs um, allowed uh, within the premises of your licensed facility. Um, so you're absolutely right on that. But you can kind of see the point where, where this takes place. All right? Um, you know, and the other thing I really wanted to address with rituals, and this is what I've been seeing a whole lot of um, recently, and one of the reasons why I wanted to have this workshop today, is that, you know, rituals are sometimes hard for classroom teachers who feel pressured or pushed for, you know, more time in the classroom to focus on academic skills or to focus on cognitive gain. Um, and because there's such a big push on, on school readiness and, and all of those academic skills, uh, we tend to want to skip the rituals. We tend to want to skip the connections. We don't have time for that is what I hear for, for people uh, from people sometimes. Well, you know, it's actually just the opposite. Um, if you want to gain academic success, your rituals and your connection should come first. All right? Because that is imperative for the success of the classroom. That builds resiliency. And resiliency is being aware of your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, and your actions. You've got to have that first right there. All right? So, you know, one example of a ritual that, you know, we definitely encourage in all of your classrooms is starting every day with those activities to unite, those activities to connect, um, those activities to commit, those activities to disengage stress, right? Um, all of that is important for you right there. The great news right here is that rituals don't take a lot of time. 
all right? They can be done very quickly. They don't take a lot of time, but they often apply ac academic learning in very meaningful ways. So you're going to put rituals in place throughout the day, all right? They also, you know, soothe the lower centers of our brain, which is wiring the brain for impulse control and willingness, like I've already mentioned. This is putting the child into their optimal state for learning, okay? So see, it does tie into the academics and the curriculum, all right? So there we go. Um, the other thing is, is, again, those school family rituals, um, they're the glue for connectionness. Um, they also allow the children to practice their social skills. Um, this is something else. When we really look at some of our trends in early education right now, uh, it's those social skills, those pro-social skills um, are really, really lacking. Now, we're not going to get too deep into this because this is a whole other webinar in itself, but there's a lot of indicators that the, um, the overexposure to screen time is leading to a lack of social skills in young children. So the more we can get them off of the screens and connecting with each other, um, it's going to strengthen those social skills and that social development. Rituals in the classroom is a great way to bring those kids together right there. Um, last thing on rituals, and then we're going to move on to routines. Rituals build trust. Without trust, children will not relax their defenses enough to be guided. Without guidance, there is no discipline. So we've got to have trust. And once again, when we look at some of the trends in early education right now, it's a lack of trust. All right? So we really have to dig down and drill into where is this lack of trust coming from, right? And, and even with adults, uh, adults not uh, willing to trust each other. Um, and there's a, that, that, again, this is a whole other six-hour workshop in itself right there, but we have to look at that part of it too. All right, you want to build trust in your classroom? Rituals is the way to go. All right, those meaningful connections right there. All right, when we talk about uh, what are some of the challenges uh, that, that you're going to get from rituals, um, rituals challenge children by providing that optimal level of arousal. Um, we talk a lot about our window of tolerance, you know. We've got this imaginary window of tolerance that we can handle the world, um, you know, within our window of tolerance, but anything outside of our window of tolerance, you know, we can't handle. We, we fight or we withdraw. Um, and sometimes children come into our classroom and they have a very narrow window of tolerance. Sometimes adults come into the classroom with a very narrow window of tolerance. So, you know, our goal as educators is to widen that window of tolerance so that children can handle the world when the world doesn't go their way. So adults can handle the world when the world doesn't go their way, all right? Rituals are really good um, because they're going to be um, critical for that arousal system, and that arousal system is what regulates this window of tolerance right here. Um, it also challenges the children with a feeling of control, all right? And when we talk about the, the feeling of control, we, we uh, tie that to assertiveness. Um, children being able to use their big voice, all right, so that they can say what they mean, mean what they say, right? Um, when we talk about bully prevention, when we talk about things like that, this is important for them. Um, of course, the exposure to intense social interaction, that promotes attachment. Man, I've been doing a lot of trainings here lately on attachment. And, and what it means to be a secure attachment figure um, and how critical this is for the children right now. Coming out of the last three and a half years, um, attachment is a big topic of conversation because we've lost attachment, um, you know, during that time frame. So that intense social interaction is going to strengthen that healthy attachment um, system, and that's what we're going for. 
Um, if you want more information on that, I do have a webinar that is available on my website, timthetrainer.com, on understanding attachment. Um, you can kind of take a look at that. Um, we want that sex successful engagement. Um, I'm actually completing um, a training right now that I'm launching next month in September. It's going to be part of our Cultivating Successful Leaders series on engagement techniques. Um, so you might want to check that out on my website. That's going to be an in-person event. Um, but we want that successful engagement. Now, I'm rewriting this training right now and what I'm going to be delivering um, you know, later on in September is that once again we have to enhance our engagement style right so that we can meet the child where they're at today all right so the way that we're engaging and interacting with children um, is very different now than it was four years ago so we have to be willing to upgrade our teaching styles so you can kind of be on the lookout for that and then, you know, the other challenge that, uh, you know, we're, we're challenging the children with rituals is attunement, all right, so that they will be aware of the world around them, um, especially uh, attuned to language development. Now, once again, we see with overexposure to screen time, um, there's a lot of delays right here. So the more we can get the children attuned to language development, um, the better off it's going to be. All right. So here are just some suggested rituals that you can put in place in your classroom. Now, I encourage you as the classroom teacher, as the administrator working with the classroom teacher, um, make your rituals specific to your classroom. There's really no cookie cutter approach to this right here. You can kind of adapt these to the theme of your classroom, the personality of the classroom. You're going to change your rituals based on the children that you currently have in the classroom. Um, right now, at the beginning of the school year, your rituals may look one way, uh, but later on in the school year, they might look a little bit different, all right, because we're constantly enhancing these, all right? Um, but make them your own. Make them your own. Um, your greetings. Greetings should be a ritual, all right? So whenever you greet children in the morning, the way you greet a child, um, you know, it kind of sets the tone for the rest of the day. So, and remember, we're looking for those gestures, um, that physical touch right there, those actions. Um, there needs to be some type of intimate involvement in those rituals and the way you're greeting the children. Instead of just shouting across the room, you know, hey, good morning, Lena, um, you know, you're putting some type of, of movement to that right there. Um, you know, some, some way of children making a commitment to keeping it safe throughout the day. So a safekeeper ritual, that's something that we practice in all of our classrooms, um, you know, making that commitment right there. Um, your agreements or your commitments. Now, you know, remember, rules don't govern behavior. Uh, you know, relationships govern behavior. So we got to kind of move away from having classroom rules, all right, to having commitments and agreements, all right? So that's the difference between a, a rule versus a commitment and agreement. But having a ritual around your commitments and your agreements, um, that's a really good ritual that you can practice throughout the day right there. Um, kindness. And recognizing kind acts um, throughout your classroom. Um, this is a wonderful ritual. Remember, what we focus on, we get more of. So when we focus on kindness, that's what you're going to get more of. Instead of constantly focusing on chaos and behavior and aggression, let's move away from that. Focus on what you want right there. Um, absent child rituals. Whenever you do have someone that is absent from the classroom or not present in the classroom, some way that you're recognizing that child that is absent with the current students so that they are aware that someone is absent today, but then also when that child comes back to your classroom and you're reuniting with that child, um, some type of ritual to let that child know that you're happy that they're back, right? Um, and that they were missed while they were gone. 
okay? Um, we talked about the greeting rituals, but also departing. So the way you end your day and the way you say goodbye to the children each day, um, that is a ritual that you can add. Um, you know, sending well wishes to a child that is in need. Uh, so maybe a child that is a sick, um, a child that has a new baby at home, a new sibling at home, um, different ways that we can send those well wishes, um, you know, things like that. All right, so there's a, a few little suggestions for you on those rituals. Let's kind of move on now um, and talk about routines, all right? So, you know, and again, a routine is when we have a sequence of events that we're trying to complete a task, right? Now, for our early education world, um, working with infants, toddlers, twos, you know, pre-K kids, all of your routines need to be in pictures. Remember, children do not have mature inner speech, all right? They don't have that voice inside of their head like we do as adults. What children have are images. They have pictures, all right? So the more real life pictures you can put into your classroom that's going to set the expectation, all right? This is what we're expecting right here. The more images we can put in our classroom, the more we're setting the child up for success. And remember, the younger the child, the bigger the picture. They need to be able to see it. And I encourage y'all to stay away from fantasy or cartoon pictures, all right? We want them to be real life pictures that the child can associate with, all right? This right here is going to support predictability. We want that predictability because it promotes a felt sense of safety, all right? Where when we have inconsistency, that yields uncertainty, all right? So we want that structure, we want that routine, we want that in place in the classroom. Clearly showing those, expect, those expectations in those pictures, um, it removes the, the biases, it removes the uncertainty. That's what we're going for. Healthy routines provide an essential ingredient to help children learn um, that their world and the people that are in it are consistent and predictable. Y'all, that one right there is huge. So huge right there. We want children to understand that the world and the people that are in it are consistent and predictable. So once again, going back to that webinar we did a couple of weeks ago on consistency, that's why I wanted to encourage you to um, go back and watch that if you haven't watched it yet. Um, but it's something that's really needed. Tie this also into attachment. I encourage you to watch that webinar on understanding attachment. Um, once again, our children need to know that we're going to be there for them. Okay, we're going to be there for them. This is so important for them. All right, it's that source of security. It's that source of safety for young children. Remembering that our brain is a pattern-seeking organ. It craves patterns and sequences. Those clear patterns create that felt sense of safety. It's enriching the brain, um, which is gonna create success for the child. All right, so um, someone asked me to repeat this. Healthy routines provide an essential e ingredient to help children learn that their world and the people that are in it are consistent and predictable, all right? Especially those healthy attachment figures, which are all of you, all right? All right, healthy rituals, healthy routines create that uh, space designated for togetherness and that sense of unity and belonging, all right? Um, it's that connection, that bond uh, between people and groups that really send that message of unconditional love. All right, some common routines that you can put into your classroom. Um, hand washing um, is a very common routine. Now, once again, you need to have this in pictures, uh, real life pictures, kind of step by step. Um, and remember, the younger the child, the bigger the picture, so they can actually see it, and it's at the child's eye level. 
Um, if you're working with children that have signs or indicators of a special need, um, I would recommend creating routine books that are specific to that individual child. So, you know, when the child is in a calm state, um, you can kind of model the child into each of the different steps, kind of take those pictures and create that routine book for that specific child step by step. Here are the steps for hand washing or, or whatever the routine may be. But this is very, very helpful, especially for children with signs and indicators of a special need that they've got these routine books that they are the ones in the book. All right, um, this works so incredibly well right there. Um, now with your, with your mainstream children, um, you know, when you're creating these pictured routines, you wanna make sure that you're using pictures of the children that are currently in the classroom, all right? We want them to be able to associate with the children that are in the pictures. So every year when you transition children and you get a new group, you're gonna be updating all of these pictured routines. That's so incredibly important right there. Um, those of you working in infant and toddler classrooms that you're doing diaper changes, um, the diaper changing time is a wonderful opportunity for you to combine rituals and routines together. Diapering is a routine, but you have an optimal moment where you can do a ritual with a child while you're doing the diapering. You're creating those meaningful connections with the child at that time. So this is one of those wonderful opportunities where you get to combine these right here. Um, with toileting, you know, um, again, pictured routines being discreet, right? Um, we, we, we don't want to invade, uh, invade privacy at all, um, but you know, kind of have those pictures out there. Nap time, nap time can be a very difficult time for some children, that transition into nap time, um, because you kind of lose some of that predictability in there. Uh, so those pictured routines of how to transition into nap time, how to get your nap mat out or your cot or your, your mat, how to get that out, you know, your blanket, your pillow, whatever that looks like in your world, um, but have it in pictures. Um, very, very helpful. I encourage wherever you put your cots and your mats, having real life pictures of the children's um, healthy attachment figures somewhere where they can see them. So mother, father, guardian, even classroom teacher. Um, if you're the lead teacher in the classroom um, and you're the child's healthy attachment figure, but you go on your lunch break during nap time and someone else that the child may not be connected with as well as they are you, if someone else is coming into that classroom during nap time, um, that can be a little scary. So having pictures of the classroom teacher um, that is normally the healthy attachment figure so the kids can see that during nap time, you're gonna notice a big difference right there. Now, once again, for your children that may have signs or indicators of a special need, um, having your nap time routine book that they can actually hold and have right there on their mat or cot, that would be very helpful for them too, all right? And again, those real life pictures where they are the model in there, okay? Um, eating routine, so snack and lunch, that's gonna look different for all of you, whether you're serving the meals or the parents bringing, you know, sending in the meals, um, how that child you know, gets their meal. Um, what that looks like, but that's a good routine for you to put in pictures. Arrival and departure routines, all right? So uh, what does that look like? Do they come in, they put their jacket on their hook, they put their lunch in their cubby, um, you know, whatever that may look like. They do, they do their safekeeper ritual, um, but you wanna put that routine in pictures as well. And for some of you, depending on the age group that you work with, 
um, you know, your dressing and undressing routines. Um, some of you that may live in an area where children have coats and jackets, um, you want to put that in pictures. That is a routine on when they come into the classroom, where do they hang up their coat, where do they hang up their jacket, um, you know, their boots for some of y'all. Um, we want to make sure that we're recognizing that right there. And what I really want to, to get across right here, routines are opportunities for children to learn. All right, routines are opportunities for children to learn. There is intention behind this, and that's really important right there. Don't hurry through the routine, okay? Take your time, it's not a race, all right? Routines build relationships with younger children. They also create self-help skills. They also support academic success. So there's a lot of intention behind successful routines. Take your time. You got this. And most important, y'all, and especially right now at the beginning of the school year, allow children time to practice their routines. You can't just expect them to know the routine and get it right. They have to be able to practice that routine over and over and over again. Remember, we've talked about this in some of our other webinars. You have to practice a skill 2,000 times in context before the child actually has that skill available to them. No different with a routine or a ritual. You have to continue to practice this for them to be successful. All right? So um, there you go. Awesome. So there's my presentation on rituals and routines. Um, hopefully this was helpful to you. Um, hopefully it will give you some opportunity to reflect on some of your current practices. How can you enhance your current practices? How can you add to your current practices? But then you know, definitely just understanding that the rituals and the routines that you put in the classroom are a very, very critical part of your classroom success. Um, they really, really are meaningful right there. All right. So um, very good. Awesome. Well, I sure do appreciate all of you joining us today for our Tim at 10. Um, the worksheet, those of you that are wanting a certificate for this, the worksheet will be available on our website in here in just a couple of minutes. Um, so you can just kind of go to our website, timthetrainer.com, and you'll see that. I will also put it into the um, chat screen right here. So give me just a couple of minutes and I will do that. And then you'll be able to complete that worksheet for your certificate. And um, there you go. Um, awesome, I will do another Tim at 10 next week. So make sure that you're looking out for that. Um, watch the Facebook page for um, when I'm gonna do these and what topics. And so um, that's how I'm gonna communicate upcoming Tim at 10s with you. Uh, so watch out on Facebook, and I will see all of you very, very soon. I just posted in the chat screen the link to complete your worksheet, or you can go straight to my website, timthetrainer.com, and you can complete that. All right? Awesome Blossom. Everyone have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday. Be good and make safe choices. Bye.